Shalom, everybody. This is Brother DL signing off for the Prophets Republic. Let's go. everybody today we're going to discuss the shiva hakira the seven interrogations we're going to apply that to the historical claim made by the quran in surah 4 ayah 157 muslims are always in the habit of invoking the name of jews as a source of uh, correct interpretation of the scriptures over against what christians teach so we're going to subject Surah 4, Ayah 157, to the scrutiny of the Bet Den, or the Jewish court. The primary text at hand, 1, 4, 157, it reads, And for their saying, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. In fact, they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but it appeared to them as if they did. Indeed, those who differ about him are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumptions. Certainly, they did not kill him. Once again, folks, this is a historical claim. So there are certain rules in which the Jewish court uh, establishes for determining the validity of a historical claim or an event. So let's take a look. According to the Bet Den or the Rabbinical House of Judgment or the Den Torah, any testimony that is void of a time frame and a location was suspect and not accepted as reputable. So if you claim that something took place, let's say a murder, you had to both mention the time and the location in which it took place. According to Rabbi Adin even Israel Steinschultz, uh, the seven interrogations According to the seven interrogations, we find that in the judge's examination of witnesses, seven fundamental questions are asked. Six are related to time, specifically of when the, the event in question took place. And the seventh is related to the place or the location. They are, number one, in which of the seven sabbatical year cycles of the Jubilee cycle did the event take place? Two. In which year of the seven year cycle did the event take place? Three, in which month? Four, on which day of the month? Five, on which day of the week? Six, at what time of the day? And finally seven, where did the event take place? Testimony is unacceptable if the witnesses contradict each other on these matters, time and place, or if one of them cannot answer one of these questions, either the time or the place. Testimony that does not stipulate the time and place of the act is unacceptable because it is irrefutable. According to the Talmud in the Mishnah, we read that Rabbi Abai said, he, the herald, must also say, on such and such a day, on such and such an hour, and in such and such a place, the crime was committed, in case there are some who know to the contrary, so that they can come forward and prove the original witnesses to be false witnesses, having deliberately given false testimony. Tractate Sanhedrin 43a. Commenting on this up, 
uh, Mishnaic uh, passage, uh, Peter Schaffer. He provides a by a Babylonian Amora of the early fourth century, arguing that the Mishnah's vague such and such a crime must be made more precise, exclaimed, the herald should not just mention the crime, but he should add the day, hour, and location of the crime. Once again, time and location. So what does all this mean? The context of Surah 4, Ayah 157 is void of both time and place. We are not told about an hour, a day, a week, a month, a year, a decade, a century, etc., etc., or a verifiable geographical location of the event that it supposedly describes. This can only mean that it does not meet the basic qualifications for providing valid testimony to the event of the crucifixion. However, the four Gospels present both. So if Surah 4, 157 was presented by Muhammad in a Jewish court of law, it would be thrown out because it does not contain the time or the place in which the event in which it claims took place actually happened. The four Gospels mention both the time and the place. Not only that, you have multiple testimony, as we shall see here. <clears throat> there is another problem for the Quran. As the aforementioned Rabbi Steinschalt states, in most instances, the testimony of a single witness has no legal standing. Indeed, in certain cases, it is prohibited for him, for example, Mohammed, to testify lest he damage the defendant's reputation. For example, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Paul, Peter, etc., etc. So this can only mean that Surah 4, 157 would be tossed out of the Jewish court. It would be not considered valid testimony uh, to argue against the crucifixion of Christ, which is uh, uh, testified to by multiple ancient sources and witnesses. Not to mention that the prophets testified to the death of the Messiah, uh, David, Isaiah, Daniel, Zechariah, not to mention that Jesus taught that he was going to die by crucifixion and rise again in his ministry on numerous occasions. It was testified to by his apostles and the original followers of Christ and also non-Christian Greco-Roman, both Jewish and uh, secular sources. <clears throat> So once again, according to the Shavah HaKira, the seven interrogations, Surah 4, Ayah 157, fails the test. According to Surah 582, the biggest enemy of the Muslim is the Jew. And it seems that that remains to be true even in evaluating the claims, the historical claims made by the Quran. What a tragedy that is. Brother DL signing off for the Prophet's Republic.